Hey, what's up, guys? James here with another episode of That's BS. And today I want to talk about your sales funnel. Um, I want to talk about how your brand strategy, your brand development affects your sales funnel, specifically your website's sales funnel. Most businesses will have several different sales funnels. And we're going to talk specifically about your website sales funnel and how your brand can affect that sales funnel and maximize your advertising dollars. I'm excited to talk about this, so let's get going. Okay, so first I'm just gonna take a minute to describe um, a sales funnel for a website. Now, like I said before in the intro, there are usually several different sales funnels in a business. Your website is usually just one of those sales funnels, and you could even probably put all the sales funnels into their own big, broad sales funnel. But today we're going to specifically look at your website's sales funnel. And whenever you make a sales funnel, you could have five different people create a sales funnel and each one will look different. Okay. Even if they're trying to do a sales funnel for the same thing, it's going to look different and that's fine. There's no perfect right way to do a sales funnel. Basically the whole point of a sales funnel is just to visually kind of look at your sales process so you can view each step of that process and try to evaluate which steps might need some help. For instance, if you're struggling to make sales, but you're getting a lot of views to your website, that's an issue. That's a red flag. There's something going on on your website. People are there, but for some reason they're not buying. That's something you need to look at. That's one of the steps in your sales funnel. Sometimes there are many, many steps. For this, I'm only going to have three steps, maybe you could call it four. Um, but let's go ahead and take a look at my idea of a website sales funnel. So the first part of the website sales funnel, in my opinion, is the audience. And these people aren't even technically in your funnel yet. These are people just out there doing their thing. They're on Facebook. Maybe they're about to do a Google search. Um, they haven't interacted with you or your business or your product yet. They're not in your sales funnel yet. Now your audience, a lot of marketing people, departments, companies, whatever, will think of your audience as basically being every human being on the planet. Their whole goal is to get as many people as possible into their sales funnel. And I don't think that's the right strategy. We're going to talk about that in a little bit. But regardless of, of who your audience is, whether it's a big, broad audience or it's a small, specific niche audience, um, the point is there is an audience and they're out there and they haven't interacted with you yet. And your goal is to get them from being out here in the nowhere land all the way down here into your sales bucket. So what's the first step of this process? Views. So you create some sort of ad, a Facebook ad, a Google ad, Pinterest, Instagram, wherever you're at. Maybe it's not even digital. Maybe it's an actual, maybe it's a business card, a flyer, whatever. You've created some sort of ad and you're trying to get it out there for your audience to see. And every person in your audience who sees your ad is now in the first step of your sales funnel. They viewed your ad. Now that doesn't necessarily mean anything just because they viewed it. When you're driving down the road and you see a billboard, that's a view. You haven't gone to their website. You haven't called them. You haven't emailed them. You haven't bought anything. You just saw the billboard. That's just one step, the first step of the process. The second step is hopefully some of the people who viewed your ad will click on it. And that's the second step in the process. They view your ad, they're intrigued, they're interested, they see something they're like, they click on it. And that takes them usually to your website or some place where they can make a purchase, maybe an Etsy store, um, whatever. Some sort of place where they can convert. So it's not always about sales. Maybe your goal is, is some sort of other conversion like uh, filling out a contact form, downloading some kind of PDF. You know, not every conversion is purchasing a product. Um, that's probably the most common one that we talk about, but there are many different types of conversions. So the next step in the process, the final step really is you know, after they click on your ad and they're looking at your website, some of those people are actually going to make a purchase. They're going to turn into a sale, a conversion, a customer, whatever. Um, and the reason that we use a funnel uh, to, to graphically, visually describe this process is because you lose people every step of the way, right? Your audience is the largest group of people in your sales funnel. A portion of that audience will view your ad. A portion of the people who view your ad will click on your ad. And a portion of the people who click on your ad 
will buy from you or sign up or do whatever it is that you want them to do. So that's a sales funnel. I'm probably not blowing your mind. This is very common. A lot of people talking about sales funnels. I just wanted to take a minute to talk about my idea of a website sales funnel. And I want to talk about how your brand strategy and your branding, your brand development in general can affect this sales funnel. So this sales funnel, every sales funnel is a funnel, obviously. It's wide at the top, it's skinny at the bottom. And there's no way around that. There's no way to to get 100% of your audience all the way down here into the sales bucket, right? It would be nice, but the reality is you're gonna lose people at every step. Now, how many people you lose at each step, it depends on a lot of different things, okay? And I think the most important thing that you can do that will improve every step of your sales funnel because it really starts from the top is to really nail down your branding and your positioning in the market. If you're just out there creating random sort of Facebook ads and promoting them, boosting them, doing whatever, with no real target audience in mind, with no brand voice, um, you're going to see a lot of people are gonna see your ad depending on how much you spend, right? You can pretty much control how many people view your ad by how much money you spend on it. But what you'll see is that very, very few people who view your ad are actually gonna click on it. And that's usually, I think, where the biggest, you know, I don't know, it, it might be the biggest loss uh, in the sales funnel is from views to clicks. Some might argue that it could be from clicks to sales as well. If that's the case, you really need to look at your website. You might have some kind of UI issue if a lot of people are coming to your website, but they're not buying. Um, that's something you need to look at. But I think probably where you lose most people is from views to clicks. I think a lot of people might see your ad, but if it doesn't resonate with them, they're not gonna click on it, okay? So it's important to not your goal should not be to get as many people in the top of the funnel as possible. I mean, ultimately, the more people, the better. But what's more important than the quantity of people coming into the top of your sales funnel is the quality. And I'm not talking about the people, you know, good people versus bad people. I mean, the quality of the lead. You need to make sure that you are marketing to people who you know there's a pretty good chance are going to resonate with your product, with your brand, with your company. If you're not doing that, you're going to get a lot of people who see your ad and just keep scrolling. And that's a waste of money. You're just wasting ad dollars showing your ad to a whole bunch of people who don't care. They don't like your brand. They don't need your product, whatever. So if you put some effort into your brand and who you are as a company and who your customers are, um, you know, you've probably heard the phrase, your vibe attracts your tribe. That absolutely is such a wonderful way to think about your business. Your brand is your vibe. You need to have a vibe. You have a vibe, whether you know it or not, whether you're working to influence that vibe or not, you have one, okay? And that's very important to understand. And so if you have a brand, regardless of what you do, you might as well at least try to make it, you know, an effective brand that resonates and is authentic. That's a huge thing these days. People care a lot about authenticity, which is, which is good. Um, if, you know, customers can tell when you're being fake. And if you're being fake, they're not going to resonate with your brand and they're not going to buy your product. Um, resonating with the brand is a lot more important now than it used to be. You know, 30, 40, 50 years ago, people cared more about the product. They didn't really care about the brand or anything like that. They just said, I need a product. I need to do this, this, and this. You have the product that does this, this, and this. So I'm going to buy it. Today, there's a lot of different options. There's a lot of competition out there. There's a lot of companies selling the same product, the same service, offering the same thing. And so we need to find another way to choose. Well, which one of these you know, companies am I going to buy from? And today, a lot of people are making buying decisions based on the company's brand and their vibe. Okay, so it's very important. If you can nail that down and you can have these conversations with your marketing team, with your sales team, your brand permeates throughout your whole business. Every department in your brand, marketing, HR, whatever, should be aligned with your brand. And if you're doing that, you're gonna see that your ad dollars are a lot more effective. You're gonna be spending the same amount of ad dollars and getting more sales, or you're able to spend more money in ads and just get three, four, five times as many sales. Because the people who come into the top of your funnel are more likely to click on your ad, they're more likely to buy your product. So you're not wasting ad dollars on people who are likely never going to 
make a purchase from you or resonate with your brand in any way whatsoever. So um, that's basically it for this video. This is not, you know, a brand strategy video. This isn't getting into the nitty gritty of how to do those things. I just hope that at the end of this video, you at least have an appreciation for the importance of branding and not just marketing and advertising. If you're just marketing and advertising, I think that you are potentially missing out on a lot of revenue to just to be frank you're, you're leaving money on the table so don't leave money on the table um, if you focus on your brand you can make the sales funnel look a little bit more you know straight up and down it'll never be a perfect cylinder right like i said you're never going to get 100 percent of your audience to come all the way through your funnel and make a purchase but your funnel doesn't have to be quite so pointy right you can start to straighten the walls out a little bit and lose less people along the way if you make sure that you get the right people in the sales funnel to begin with so that's all i have for today thank you for watching this video guys please let me know what you think in the comments i'd love to talk more about this and i'll see you in the next video